Okay, guys, uh, Logic uh, 10.4. Let's look at the um, file tempo editor. Okay, so I'm going to start by creating a drummer track in the alternative genre, just so I've got a funky drum beat, which I'm going to use a little bit further on. Okay, now my project tempo is 100 beats per minute. And if you don't know how to get that, you switch this to custom. Okay, 100 beats per minute is my project tempo. Now then, if you bring a piece of audio into the uh, file tempo editor for the first time, this is what happens. You go to your project media, add audio file. Now I'm going to look for it. I've got some bass stems here. Okay, so we, we grab a piece of audio, bring it into our project, and we drag it into the arrange area and it creates its own track. Double click and open it in file tempo. Now, if this is the first time you've brought this piece of audio into Logic, Logic tells you in this window that the file you brought in doesn't have any tempo, downbeat, or time signature information. So you need to analyze it. So you analyze it and it takes as long as it takes depending on the length of the file. Oh, there we go. And it's analyzed. Yeah, and Logic puts in bright orange bar markers and quarter beat darker orange markers in between. This is what it thinks are the bars and beats and it's worked out the tempo from that. Right? Okay. That's what happens to analyze a file for the first time. Right? But let's bring in a piece of audio that I've already done before. Because once you've analysed a piece of audio, that file remembers. It keeps that information as part of the file. So here's a bit of guitar. Now this guitar was recorded freeform without a metronome or a drum machine to play along to. And I've trimmed this piece of audio so that it begins exactly on the first guitar hit. Right. So I bring it in, drag it on. And um, as I say, I've already previously analysed this, so it remembers all this information. It doesn't need to be analysed again, but you can analyse it again. Analyse again, or remove original recording tempo and analyse again. Right. So let's reanalyse it. There it is. Okay, so there it is. Logic has analysed this file, which was not played to a metronome, and it's a variable tempo file. It constantly, subtly varies in tempo. And what Logic does is it puts in bar lines, which are called downbeat lines, these bright orange ones, which it puts starting on the first transient that it thinks is the first proper beat of the bar. And then it puts them in on transient positions at the positions that it thinks at the beginning of bar two, the beginning of bar three, the beginning of bar four, etc. And in between it puts quarter beats. It only needs quarter beats to work out the tempo. It doesn't need to to, to, to analyse the transients at eighths or sixteenths or something, right? Now, the bright orange lines are the downbeats, the beginning of bars, and the darker orange lines are the quarter beats. Now, if Logic has analysed the file out of sync, you can change which is the downbeat lines. So for example, in this piece of guitar audio here, this first bit of guitar there, Logic has put a downbeat line on it. Logic says, yep, this is the first guitar hit, so this is the first beat of the bar. So that's then beat one, beat two, beat three, and beat four, and then there's the next bar, bar two, beat one, two, three, four. But if this was a slur, at the beginning of the guitar playing leading into that hit and that hit is actually the first beat of the bar the first downbeat every quarter beat line has a little orange ball at the top which allows you to click it and make that the, the downbeat so as i said if this first bit of guitar there in that quarter beat was actually a slur leading into that hit and that hit was the actual first downbeat i can click that line set downbeat that becomes the downbeat and it shifts everything up so now that's the first downbeat. Beat one, two, three, four. That's the next downbeat. Bar two, beat one, two, three, four, etc. Right. So you can change the downbeat and it shifts everything up or back the other way. But let's put it back to what it originally was. This, the actual 
downbeat is the very first. Can you move? Thank you. There, but I can't get it. I can't do it. There's no. Oh no, I can't get the ball there. Every time I go to do this video, there's a problem. I've done it eight times now. And now the new problem is, oh my God, I cannot any longer select that line as the original bloody transit. Let's reanalyze it then. Bloody hell. Right, now it's done it. You can't see the orange line on the first beat, you see. Right, but that's beat one, two, three, four. Bar two, beat one, two, three, four. Bar three, beat one, two, three, four. Okay. So the very first downbeat, the very first beat of bar one is the very first transient there. Beat one, beat two, beat three, beat four. Next bar, bright orange line, downbeat. Beat one, two, three, four. Next orange downbeat line, the beginning of bar three. Beat one, two, three, four, etc. Right. Now the other thing you can do, apart from changing which of the downbeat lines, these lines, whether they are the downbeat lines or the quarter beat lines, you can grab them individually and move them like that. You can move them manually if you want to. You can also scale the selection. Grab any of the quarter beat lines and it's scale. you can scale them relative to each other like that. Command Z to undo. Or you can grab this and move all of them. Offset them against the audio. And if you've dragged over a selection like that, now that bottom scale all is missing. You've got scale left move right instead which shifts everything up or back all right okay within the selection all right okay so logic has analyzed this piece of audio it's saying that that very first hit is bar one beat one there's bar two there's bar three there's bar four and it's worked out an average tempo inside each of those bars and if we look at the tempo display there when we hit play we'll see that the tempo changes pretty much in every quarter beat. And that's because each quarter beat line inside a bar is placed at a quarter beat distance based on the overall length of the bar, but also it's being brought as near as possible to the transient nearest to where a quarter beat position will be. So they're not spaced evenly apart, therefore the tempo changes in each quarter beat on this display here. But another thing you can do if you want to is you can swipe across and you can do set average tempo within each bar. Now that has only affected the quarter beat lines inside this bar because I had that and only that bar highlighted. If I highlighted all the bars, it would do all of them. But it shifted them all subtly. It, what Logic does then is it works out the average tempo of that bar, and then it place, it subtly shifts the quarter beat so they're e more evenly spaced apart based on the average tempo across that bar. Right? Let me undo that. Okay, that's what those all these lines can do. So Logic has worked out the tempo of this based on these bar lines and these quarter beat lines right now now comes the first irritation Apple have decided on this wonderful system that this is the volume control to listen to the piece of audio in the editor right turn it right up or turn it down whatever you want but you're supposed to be able to listen to it with a metronome that's the metronome and the metronome settings for this editor are set in the main metronome settings here. So if I sort of put this at the average listening level, the default kind of listening level, which is like that, right, and I go into this metronome settings because I can't hear my metronome at the default level, which is around there, oh, it's, it's, you can hardly hear it, trust me on that. So you come in here and you turn this up. That's better. I can now check the file listening to the metronome. But then you think, oh, I want to turn up the level of the file I'm listening to. So you turn that up and it turns down the metronome. When you turn the level of the file down, it turns the metronome up. Who 
Whose stupid idea was that? <laughs> I mean, what? I can't, you know, there's no, there doesn't seem to be any setting for that. Anyway, it's ridiculous. Please, Apple, change that. I want to turn the level of the listening up, and I don't want the metronome to turn down. I want them both to turn up the same amount or turn down the same amount, right? So we listen with the metronome on to check that it's right. Right, we can see, we can see that in every quarter beat the tempo is changing. And it's a variable file. Okay. Now, there's a couple of other things before we move on. As I said, the time sig signature can be changed, right, manually if you want. And you've got this times two and divide by two. Now, as I said, Logic only needs quarter beats to analyse the tempo. Right, so it puts bar lines in and quarter beats in between. If you want a finer analysis, like you want the lines in between to be analysed, because it's a busier piece of audio, the only way you can do it is to times two, double the tempo, and then it effectively puts lines in on the eighths, but it still only keeps four beats to the bar, so it doubles the tempo to achieve that. It's a bit of a thing that, right? but that's how it works. Or you can half the tempo, double double, half, half. Okay, all right. So there's the tempo analysed. Um, Logic knows that the tempo is subtly changing within each beat. But when we now apply this tempo information from this file to the project tempo, Logic won't use every little subtle tempo change within each quarter beat. It'll just put in tempo changes to keep the project tempo generally in sync with the audio. Let's do it. Let's bring the um, global tracks in so we can see the tempo line. There it is at 100 beats a minute all the way across. And now we are going to apply the tempo, the variable tempo, because it's constantly subtly changing, from this audio file to the project. Here we go. Adapt the project tempo to the region tempo. In other words, change the project tempo to match the region tempo and align to downbeat. Now align to downbeat means this. Your piece of analysed audio might not have its first downbeat exactly on a bar line. So when you perform this command it will set the tempo to match the tempo information. It'll set the project tempo to match the tempo information in the file but it will also snap the first downbeat to the nearest bar line. Right, so let's move it just slightly off that first beat on the first bar and do it and it will snap that first downbeat transient to that first beat and add all the tempo information from the file. Here we go. Adapt project tempo to region tempo and align to downbeat. Bam! Oh no it moved it back to this nearest bar. All right let's, sorry I wasn't zoomed in enough. Let's move that just a bit nearer to this bar line. Let's do it again. Here we go. Bam. There we go. It snaps the first downbeat to the nearest bar line, which is the first beat of the bar, and puts all the tempo information in. But notice, as I said, it doesn't put all the little tiny tempo variations in for each quarter beat. It just puts them where it needs them to ensure that generally the sync of the project is going to keep in sync with the audio. And now I can put my drums to this audio. Um, there's a break in the guitar playing there. I know that's the end of an 8 bar verse, so I'll put that piece of 8 bar drumming ending on that break, and then a little bit of 4 bars of intro drumming. Then it goes into 2 bars of outro drumming, 8 bars of verse, which ends on the next guitar break, 2 more bars of little sort of breakdown drumming, and then into the next verse, 8 bars long, which ends on that guitar break. And there it is. Um, now I've got very very basic drums. Take the fills down a bit to my um, to my guitar, like this. Here we go.
Yeah, and then you know, if you obviously all I've done is slapped in some drums, but if you were going to do it, you know, properly, like maybe this bit of drumming here, uh, you make this some intro drumming, maybe a little bit less busy, or I'll have toms playing there or something. Then there's my main beat, and then when I come to the breakdown here, the guitar in the last two bars here starts playing a more dun jum 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 thing like that. So I'll back that off and put in a little two bar bit there and have that play a tom lick ending in a fill like that let's say and then we get this at the end. Yeah, you know what I mean? Just build your drums around it, yeah? Easy peasy. It works fantastic. It really does. You know, to, to set the project tempo to a piece of variable audio so you can arrange everything else around it in sync. It, it absolutely works brilliant. Okay, now there's another thing that we can do with this file tempo editor, um, which we can already do in Logic, but the file tempo editor just saves us time, and that's when we're working with drum loops. So let me bring in a loop. Add audio file. I'm going to use a cheesy Amen break for this. I've already analysed this file, so it's got the information. So when I drag it in and put it in the project area, and it creates a track, and we open it in the file tempo, it's already pre-analysed, right? But again, I can analyse it again. Oh, there it is. So this is a two-bar loop. Right, two bars in length. I'll count it for you. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. It's a two bar loop. Right. So there's the analysis. Downbeat there, bar one, beat one, two, three, four. Bar two, beat one, two, three, four. Right? And for this to work properly, you must have this loop, your loop must be properly trimmed, very accurately trimmed in an editor. Right? Then it works best. So all done, and now we just uh, let's get rid of the tempo information created from that region. Let's just get rid of all this tempo information. Go back to the default project tempo of 100. And now we're going to set the project tempo to match that loop. Now, the way we currently do it in Logic is like this. It's a two bar loop, so we set a two bar cycle range. Right. Whatever the length of the loop is, you set the cycle range the same. Then you open the audio in the audio file edit and you do adjust tempo by selection and locators. And that makes the two bar loop fit the two bar cycle range by adjusting the project tempo to exactly fit. Bam. There it is. And it cycles around perfectly. Yeah? No? Okay. That's one way of doing it, the old way of doing it. That's back to 100 again, the default tempo. But with the new file tempo box, we just bring in our well-trimmed loop, analyse it, and then just do actions, adjust project tempo, or adapt project tempo, bam. And it puts the tempo in above the region so that this region perfectly uh, the tempo is set perfect for the region. You don't need the cycle range for this to, to work, right? It, you just do that command and it sets the tempo, but only above the region, right? But it is perfect. If I put two bar loop around, it'll loop around perfectly. Yeah? Okay, now after the end of the loop, the project tempo reverts to whatever your original project tempo was, in this case 100. But if you want that tempo to continue, the tempo taken with the loop, if you want it to continue along the entire length of the rest of the project, you just knock out that node on the tempo track where it reverts back to the original tempo. Just double click and knock it out. And now the tempo is set at the tempo of the file, the loop, all the way across the project. Yeah? So, you know, if we were then to double this up, it will just sync all the way across, yeah? Let's see it with the metronome.
Yeah. So that's just a quicker way of setting the project tempo um, to a loop. Although it is a bit irritating that it only does it over the loop and then reverts to the original tempo. I wish there was an option to not do that. Okay, so that's how you do that. Okay, now the last thing is there's a couple of things that do not work. Oh, I can't get them to work, right? If you know how, let me know. In the actions menu, everything I've shown you uses this command adapt the project tempo to the tempo information from the region, right? But there are two other actions adapt project tempo and all other regions tempo to the tempo derived from the region or adapt the re region so it switches to the project tempo yeah adapt region tempo to project tempo but neither of these work i've tried everything and they do nothing now interestingly in apple's official literature online when you look these two commands are not listed under actions it only tells you this command so even Apple don't list these two commands in their official documentation. So I've written to um, a guy who works inside Apple in the GarageBand and Logic development team, asking him, is this, these don't work. Am I doing something wrong? You do not list these commands in your official documentation. What's the story? Because I can't get them to work. If you know how they work, tell me. Um, but hopefully we'll find out from Apple. But I tell you, because... Apple don't even list these as commands in their own documentation. If you search for either of these commands in Google, you get no results at all. Nothing. So they don't work. I can tell you they don't work. Look, this one. Adapt the region tempo to the project tempo, which clearly means, unless I don't speak English very proper, uh, which properly means, or should mean, that adapt the region tempo to fit the project tempo. That's what it should mean, right? But if it clearly doesn't work. Look, let me set the project tempo to 120, let's say. Okay. Adapt the region tempo to the project tempo. Bam. Absolutely nothing happens. It doesn't work. And the other one doesn't work either. I can tell you, right? So what the score is with these, I currently don't know. But hopefully we'll find out. But that is the file tempo editor. Yeah. A couple of irritations. That metronome thing is a real pain. Be very careful this doesn't flip to constant. It does it sometimes when you're not noticing. right? Um, but yeah, fantastic. You can take a piece of freeform audio, bring it into your project, and really quickly get the project tempo mapped out to, to match that file, and then arrange your other stuff around it. It's really, really good. And it's a bit quicker to get the tempo for loops, or set to loops. right? It's just a shame the other stuff doesn't work. But um, there you go but maybe I'm doing something wrong. Okay, so that's the file tempo editor um, in Logic 10.4. Um, if I find anything else out about it, I'll come back and do a video on it.